Hey, Firebrand X here again to do an OSSC tutorial video on a rather unique setup of uh, using the Nintendo's GameCube and the Game Boy Player add-on device, but with the added benefit of a special software driver known as the Game Boy Interface, or GBI for short. Um, it's kind of funny in that the Game Boy Player itself is typically abbreviated as GBP. So you could say that this video is about GBI on the GBP for the GC on the OSSC. Uh, reminds me of a scene in Good Morning Vietnam, and those of you that have seen it will know exactly what I'm referencing. Uh, but at any rate, I'll be using the uh, EverDrive Game Boy Advance X5 flash cart uh, in the uh, Game Boy Player add-on device for the GameCube. And this will be based on the official component cables. I know those are pretty expensive now. I remember back in the day I bought them for $50 and, and I felt like guilty for paying $50. But little did I know they would be going upwards of two to $300. You know, some crazy ridiculous amount. Uh, but since then, there have been uh, HDMI solutions, HDMI adapters that have come out in one form or another and some still being made. Uh, the problem with those is you can't feed them into the OSSC so that you can upscale them with the OSSC. You can with the Frame Meister, but that's a different subject and the video quality on the Frame Meister just isn't as good as you can get with the OSSC. Plus there's lag and you know all the other issues that uh, come about when using the Frame Meister. But if you have to, you have to. However, for this video, we're going to be using the OSSC and official component cables uh, actually made by Nintendo. Uh, and getting back to the HDMI adapters, uh, uh, another problem with those uh, devices, as far as I've seen, I've, I've checked out uh, the uh, Eon uh, GameCube HDMI adapter. And the problem with those is they don't upscale you know, to like 4 or 5x scales, uh, I believe the best they like can do is 480p. And so again, you would need to feed them into an upscaler if you really wanted the best possible image you could. And since we can't do that with the uh, OSSC, uh, that's why I'm using the official component cables. Uh, with that being said, there is a game changer that's coming out, uh, which is an adapter made by Woozle for the Game Boy Advance itself. It's an, it's an HDMI adapter for the actual handheld itself. And it outputs at 720p HDMI in uh, perfect digital clarity. Uh, those that have checked it out said it's, it's amazing, looks fantastic. Uh, my only problem is that uh, since it's 720p output, my particular 1080p display it doesn't handle upscaling 720p very well. It looks kind of blurry, just like it does with 480p upscaling. However, if you have a newer TV, say like a 4K, I've heard a lot of those do a fantastic job with 720p upscaling. And if that's the case, and you would prefer to use Woozle's HDMI adapter when it comes out, that's going to be, you know, fantastic for the vast majority of solutions. But for people like me that's stuck with a 1080p display that's picky about 720p output, uh, this video is for y'all. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I actually use uh, the SD Media Launcher and the Pro Action Replay boot disk. I know other people have modded their GameCubes uh, in order to boot special drivers, but I just use the uh, Pro Action Replay disk. So let's go ahead and boot that up now. Close the lid and get this guy loaded up. And uh, we're going to go to this first folder here, the Game Boy Interface folder. And you'll see here I have several drivers, and these were all downloaded from the April 22nd, 2018 package. So that's what this video is based on. I know Extrems is constantly making new updates to his drivers. So just so people know, this video is based on his April 22nd, 2018 driver package. So first we have the standard GBI driver. 
And then these three down here, uh, you'll notice they say GBI HF. The HF stands for high fidelity. And these are special drivers that uh, Extremes has made where he effectively hacked the uh, digital output capabilities for the video on the GameCube. Uh, and this allowed him to align the color better, you know, the chrominance better for component video such that you can now get perfectly dialed in HDMI quality crystal clarity on like the OSSC, for example, or for these, uh, you know, these uh, GameCube video uh, HDMI adapters. But again, like I said before, those guys typically only scale up to 480p. So, you know, this is why I use the OSSC as I want, you know, five scale action if I can get it. With that said, you'd think I would normally use this standard GBI HF file, and while you can get a pretty pretty good dialed in image on OSSC optimal timing, I have found this other driver here, this GameCube Video X driver, I get like the most flawless results I've ever seen uh, dialing in perfect pixels for these things. So I actually recommend using this driver. Uh, these other drivers down here are speed running drivers. They're optimized for speed runners. I don't know the details on what Extremes has done to those, but I do know that uh, you can't dial in perfect pixels on them because they're not uh, based on the high fidelity hacks that Extremes has done on these three files. So let's go ahead and load up this particular GameCube Video X1 that I recommend for the uh, official component cables into the OSSC. And it should bring up the, uh, yeah, here we are, the uh, actual menu of the uh, GBA EverDrive X5. Uh, I have already set the um, OSSC to line 4X generic, and that's just so I can do this video. Uh, when we go to actually do these optimal settings, uh, you can try them on 5x just to see if they'll work on your display. But remember, of course, if your display is a 1080p display, you want to make sure your 5x mode on the OSSC is set to 1080p and not 1200, because obviously that will not be compatible. Um, for the purposes of dialing in these optimal timings, I'm going to go ahead and load up one of my favorite uh, Game Boy Advance games, which is going to be Metroid Zero Mission especially because it has this background uh, in the subscreen, which is this green uh, crosshatch grid, uh, which makes for a great, you know, test pattern, if you will, to dial in, dial in optimal timing, although Extremes has already provided the proper H sample rate, so we don't have to worry about that, and I'll explain that as we go here, so I'm load this up. this pre-save game but even in generic mode it looks pretty darn good as you can see but we can do a lot better all right and here is the subscreen with that green grid that I was talking about before so this makes a great uh, sort of test pattern to make sure that your um, sampling phase is perfectly dialed in so let's go to the OSSC menu and video in processing, the first one on the list. We're going to go into that. And we're actually going to change this LPF to 35 megahertz. Now I know that normally for 240p input you would use 9 megahertz, but for some reason 35 megahertz with these official component cables allowed me to dial in perfectly smooth graphics without any ghosting or, you know, like, you know, false contours on edges, so uh, just bear with me on this and trust me that 35 megahertz is what you want to use for uh, official component cables. Uh, also I like to raise the gain level on uh, component here, not these offsets, gain level, there we are. I like to raise them up to about 70 because I think it's just a bit too dark for my taste at default. So I'll raise each one of these up to 70. We go that should do it all right uh, so the first thing we want to do is uh, 
actually go to yeah sync options and make sure that's set to 2.5 megahertz max uh, that's actually the perfect combination with the 35 megahertz video LPF uh, and all again it goes back to I found through my own obsessive you know screen capture tests that these two particular combination of LPF settings gave me the uh, best possible picture so that's why I choose these two uh, now we're going to go ahead and go to output options and go to line 4x and change that to 320 by 240 optimal and as you can see there's now some uh, ghosting and false contours on some of the uh, grid lines there so now we can use that to dial in optimal timing so let's back out and go to sampling options go up one to advanced timing for 320 by 240 and we start off with H sample rate. Now Extrems has already said that 433 is what you want to use for these uh, high fidelity drivers so let's check that out. Bump that up to 433 and as you can see, wow look at that, the uh, grid is perfectly aligned, there's no ghosting uh, so that's perfect there. However uh, I found that my back porch is slightly off so I changed that to 54 and that just gets that centered for me and next thing we want to do is go back down to sampling phase and I found for my particular setup that uh, 225 looks the best everything looks perfectly dialed in at 225 again sampling phase is gonna differ from console to console so just use this grid if you have access to this game and uh, adjust sampling phase based on this you know if the grid looks nice and clean like this no ghosting no flickering then you know you've got it dialed in and it looks fantastic uh, with that said I think we're done here so let's go ahead and play some of this to check it out This is actually, like I said before, one of my favorite uh, Game Boy Advance games. Uh, it's such an excellent remake of the original on the regular Nintendo. Uh, I'm like Bob uh, at uh, Retro RGB in that, you know, after playing this one, it's hard for me to go back and play the original because this one is just such a great remake slash update, if you will. And again, uh, you really have to see it live to appreciate just how clear the graphics are. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm having to record this and compress the recording, and then YouTube does its own compression. But even with that, it looks pretty darn good. But yeah, you know when you watch this live, it looks like you're playing on an HDMI adapter that's perfectly upscaling it. So it's just fantastic looking. All right, let's go ahead and test out a regular Game Boy game just so you can see how that looks. And thankfully, we don't have to change any of the settings to retain, you know, that perfect quality look. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reset, bring back up the menu. And we're going to go back go down to let's see. Um I don't I actually haven't really tried Game Boy Color. But I guess I could, yeah, let's try that. And uh, maybe uh, do the Zelda game, see how that looks. I don't know what they call it on the Legend. Yeah, Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening. There it is. Yeah, that's the one we want. And look at that, it looks flawless. Just, just fantastic. start a new game.
But yeah, looks fantastic. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment uh, below in the video and I'll try to answer any questions you have. Uh, but yeah, this is a fantastic solution if you happen to have the official component cables and a Game Boy player and the GBI uh, you know, driver and an SD media launcher. If you get that whole thing set up, uh, you, you really don't need all those uh, HDMI solutions, those HDMI adapters, especially since they only upscale to like 480p as far as I've seen. But again, there is on the horizon Woozle's adapter for 720p, so uh, if your TV does great 720p upscaling, that's going to be the way to go. Thanks, and uh, appreciate you watching. Later.